Okay, so last week Apple has released a very interesting product and I'm not talking about the quietly released 2018 MacBook Pros or the 200 pound sleeves for the new MacBook Pros, but rather this thing. Let me just lift this up because this thing is heavy. Oh, so this is this is the Blackmagic eGPU. It's an external GPU that Apple has made in partnership with Blackmagic and this thing is pretty cool. Kind of. Now, in case some of you might not know what an eGPU is, eGPU means external graphics card or GPU, uh, because you see the main issue in a Mac is actually not the CPU or the storage or the screen, because Apple has actually been using the most powerful processors from Intel for many, many years in their Macs. The i7 7920H Coupe processor inside uh, the 2017 top of the line MacBook Pro, or the i9's uh, 8950H Coupe processor inside the 2018 MacBook Pros are basically processors that are very, very difficult to find in many other laptops out there, and these are Intel's highest end laptops processor. But the main issue in a Mac has actually been for a long, long, long time, their GPU. Since Apple wants to make their Macs thinner and thinner, they not only sacrifice the cooling, hence, you know, every single Mac thermal throttles, but they also sacrifice on the GPU performance. So, for example, even the 7,000 pound MacBook Pro 2018 15 inch, it comes with a Radeon, uh, AMD Radeon Pro 560X GPU, which is actually worse than a 580, which is a 200 pound mid range GPU. And then the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it doesn't even come with a GPU at all, it just integrated graphics. So, yeah. So to solve this issue, Apple has implemented native eGPU support or external GPU support in macOS 10.13.4 and later. So now you can actually buy an eGPU enclosure, pop in whatever GPU you want to add and connect it to your Mac via Thunderbolt 3 and get desktop class GPU performance from even a 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is this is awesome. And Apple has now recently released their first eGPU enclosure. And here's my full in-depth review of it and why you should probably avoid it. So, and also a state, uh, an update on the state of eGPUs for Macs. So get those Macs ready because this is going to be a really interesting and detailed video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so I'll start with a good. Uh, the new Apple Blackmagic eGPU is honestly the best looking eGPU enclosure on the market. You can definitely tell that Apple has been involved in designing this. Uh, it's made entirely out of polished metal. The color itself, by the way, is very, very similar and not even identical to the Space Gray MacBook Pros. So you can tell that it's been designed with the MacBook Pros in mind. And then this is also the smallest eGPU enclosure that I've seen. So uh, its entire build is very similar to the Mac Pro from 2013, as in it actually sucks air from the bottom and blows it out the top and this translates to one of the best cooling solutions for an eGPU enclosure and as a result of that this is also the quietest eGPU on the market. I mean it, it's so quiet that I can barely even hear this thing when it's on even under full load. Okay, what else? Well, it's also very, very easy to use. So you just plug in uh, the eGPU into your power outlet, you connect it via the Thunderbolt cable that's included in the box, your MacBook Pro or iMac or iMac Pro, and that's it. It automatically turns itself on, so there is no power button. Uh, you do get this LED indicator on the bottom, which basically tells you when the GPU is working. And yeah, other than that, this is pretty much it. And like I said, design-wise, this definitely looks like an Apple product. So if you have a MacBook Pro, this will look amazing on your desk. Now, some other advantages that make this GPU stand out from the rest is that one, it does not require you to use an external monitor, which is pretty huge. So you can just plug it into your Mac and you can already use it. It does have an HDMI 2.0 port on the back so you can in fact connect it to a 4k monitor at 60 frames per second uh, if you wish for you know to get better performance but if you just want to use this with a built-in display on your Mac you can easily do that and then this is also the only eGPU on the market that actually supports the LG UltraFine 5k monitor which is a huge huge plus uh, so for example if you have a 30 inch MacBook Pro especially you can get an LG UltraFine 5k monitor and then with this eGPU you can basically turn your MacBook Pro into a full-fledged 5K iMac with obviously the advantage of just disconnecting the cable and, you know, taking your MacBook Pro anywhere you wish, which is which is awesome. Now, in terms of the actual ports, like I said, uh, we get the HDMI 2.0 port on the back. We get two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so one goes into your MacBook, the other one goes into the 5K monitor, uh, or you can actually run both of these, the, the eGPU and the monitor, on the same cable, but this would take quite a bit of a performance hit. Now, you also get four USB 3.1 Type-A ports as well, so you can connect external hard drives, you can connect mouse receivers, and uh, and more. So this is really useful to have. So these are pretty much all the good sides of the CGPU. So great design, it's very silent and easy to use, and then it also supports the LG UltraFine 4K and 5K monitors, and then it also comes with quite a few uh, external ports, extra ports. Now, 
let's talk about the downsides because there's quite a few of them. So the biggest downside of this GPU is the fact that it's not upgradable. This is literally the only GPU on the market that's not upgradable. So it comes with the Radeon 580 inside with 8 gigabytes of GDR5 memory, but that's it. You cannot take the 580 out, uh, you cannot upgrade it, so you're basically stuck with a 580 forever until you decide to replace this thing, which is probably going to be like two years after. And here's the thing, the 580 is basically a mid-range GPU. It's not a high-end GPU. It's basically the same one that you get inside the 2017 iMac. This is why I've said that by using this with a 13-inch MacBook Pro, you basically transform your 13-inch MacBook Pro into a 5K iMac. But considering that this thing costs $700 or 600 pounds in the UK, it should have honestly come with a Vega 64 instead. Uh, GPU prices, by the way, have dropped, so now you can get a 580 for around 250 pounds, which is pretty good, uh, which means that this GPU essentially costs 350 pounds, which is 100 pounds more than the Razer Core X GPU, which, by the way, is upgradable. And basically for 600 pounds, you can build an entire PC with a 580 that also includes a processor, memory, hard drive, all of which uh, all of which are actually upgradable and also removable when you wish. I mean, when you buy an eGPU, it is because you want to make your Mac more of like a PC. You want that upgradability. You want to upgrade your built-in eGPU with an external one, uh, so you need an enclosure that itself can be upgraded in the future. But this one cannot. And the price and the fact that it's not upgradable are not the main reasons you should be avoiding the CGPU, by the way. So here I have a very complex Final Cut Pro project. So this is a full 10 minute 4K video straight from my GH5. And on top of it, I have the same clip four more times, picture in picture, basically. So five 4K clips on top of one another. This is basically really, really demanding for the GPU. So I'm trying to play this back on my 2018 quad core 13 inch MacBook Pro and it's an entire mess. It's completely unplayable, but my 15 inch from 2017 seems to handle it quite well. So I can play this project almost in real time on my 15 inch model, just because it comes with the dedicated GPU set Radeon Pro 560. So now let's do a quick export test. So uh, my 15 inch MacBook Pro finished exporting this in 15 minutes and three seconds, which is really, really good considering how complex this project was. And keep in mind, this was a 10 minute project. Okay, so what about my 13 inch MacBook Pro? Well, my 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro finished in just 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. Three times slower than my 15-inch MacBook Pro, just because it doesn't have a dedicated GPU, even though the CPU, by the way, is more powerful than my 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is crazy. So CPU-wise, we got a lot of improvements. GPU-wise, well, it still doesn't have a dedicated GPU. So I wanted to do the same test, but this time with the eGPU connected to the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So first I tested this on my 15-inch MacBook Pro, and playback was about the same. I couldn't really see any improvements, but interesting enough, on my 13-inch MacBook Pro, the playback was also the same. Yeah, also the same as before, even though I had the eGPU connected. No improvements, still basically unplayable. So fun fact, Final Cut Pro does not use the eGPU for playback anymore. So what about exporting? Well, I tried the eGPU with my 13-inch MacBook Pro because that one was the one that took ages to export. And with the eGPU, it took actually only 44 minutes. <laughs> so we got a one minute improvement, which by the way, is within the margin of error. So essentially, it didn't work. Now, I tried restarting the MacBook a number of times. Uh, the GPU is used in macOS, by the way, so I can see it being recognized. And in Geekbench 4, I can even select it as the rendering GPU. And I'm actually getting three to four times the GPU performance on my 13-inch MacBook Pro, by the way. So it's definitely, definitely working. The only problem is that Final Cut does not use the eGPU at all. Now, from fact number two, a few versions ago, it did support it. Final Cut did support the eGPU, uh, but for some reason, Apple removed the eGPU support. And I'm guessing that Apple will bring this back eventually. But until then, if you want to use an eGPU, especially this one with Final Cut Pro 10, it's basically useless. Okay, so what about some other apps? What about gaming? Well, I tried Fortnite and before the eGPU, the performance was abysmal on macOS. Even my 15-inch MacBook Pro with all the settings on high and a resolution of 1440 by 900, I was getting about 35 to 45 frames per second, which is decent, but it was a constant FPS drop, not because of the GPU, but because of how poorly Fortnite is optimized on macOS. So Fortnite does not use Metal on macOS yet, even though they promoted this at their event. So yeah, no metal support in Fortnite. The 13-inch MacBook Pro, by the way, was getting about 15 to 20 frames per second. And then I tried using the GPU, the eGPU, and guess what? There was literally zero improvement, zero. Yeah, Fortnite does not use the eGPU at all, even though Apple claims that it does. Okay, so I tried the same thing, but in Windows. 
And in Windows, well, even without the GPU on my 15-inch MacBook Pro, I was getting about 70 to 80 frames per second with no more FPS drops, by the way. Whereas previously, it was getting close to half of that frame rate. So yeah, if you use Windows, you can basically play any game at pretty good performance, even without the GPU. However, when trying the eGPU, it was recognized by Windows, but Fortnite actually saw zero improvements. Okay, so quite some interesting results. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, eGPUs essentially, they are supported on macOS, but it actually depends on the app developer to enable this functionality. Because here's the thing, macOS, macOS defaults to a dedicated GPU if it sees one. But a 15-inch MacBook Pro already comes with one, so you might run into a few issues with a few apps, since you know, you'll have essentially three GPUs on the 15-inch MacBook Pro, the Intel uh, 630, the 560 AMD 560 Radeon Pro, and then the 580 in the GPU. And then the 13-inch MacBook Pro is actually a better candidate for, for this, for the CGPU, because, you know, you don't have a dedicated GPU in that one, so you will be getting some considerable performance boost, but only if the app supports it. And most of the apps do not support the GPU right now. I mean, the only ones that do support it are literally the benchmarking apps. So... Yeah, if you really want to get an eGPU, honestly, the best option right now is the Razer Core X. So that eGPU not only costs 250 pounds, but it's also upgradable. So you can put in any GPU you want in this thing. You can put in a GTX 1080 if you wish. I've actually included a link for that in the description if you're interested. But right now, do not buy the Apple Blackmagic eGPU unless, unless you use DaVinci Resolve. And you have a 13-inch MacBook Pro with an LG Ultrafine 5K monitor in that case. Yes, it's totally worth it because this is the only one that supports that monitor and the Vinci Resolve takes full advantage of this. So in that case, yeah, you, you can get it. But at, even at that price point, with a monitor and with the eGPU, you're better off getting a 5K iMac. Okay, so at this point, I actually ended the video, but then I thought, why is Apple showing, you know, the big Fortnite numbers, the big Fortnite improvements when I didn't see any? And then I saw the asterisk that they were actually testing Fortnite with the LG Ultrafine 5K monitor connected. So I connected the monitor again, I did a few more tests, and I found some very interesting results. Okay, so even though you can actually connect the GPU to the MacBook directly and it will work, only the apps that support it would actually use it. This is why I can test it via Geekbench Compute without the need to have the monitor connected. However, apps that don't support eGPUs, they won't be using it. Instead, if I connect the monitor to the eGPU and then the eGPU itself to the Mac, that's when the eGPU would be forced by Mac OS. Also, you need to have the monitor connected directly to the external GPU. So one cable from the monitor into the eGPU and then the eGPU to the Mac. If you have uh, the eGPU connected to the Mac directly and then the monitor also connected to the Mac directly, so two cables going to, into your MacBook Pro, then it won't work. So again, you need a monitor to the eGPU and then the eGPU to your Mac, so everything needs to be daisy-chained. Okay, so I've done this, I've restarted my MacBook Pro, and guess what? Finally, Final Cut Pro was indeed using the eGPU for playback. So I was getting about the same performance on my 13-inch MacBook Pro with eGPU as on my 15-inch MacBook Pro with dedicated 560 graphics. So in terms of the export time, so I'm guessing most of you care about those more, uh, they were not improved because Final Cut was still only using the integrated graphics for export. So yeah, that's quite a bit disappointing. And I wanted to try Fortnite again. And actually this time I've seen a huge improvement. So even at 2560 by 1440, I was getting close to 60 frames per second with the high settings and the game was totally playable apart from, you know, those FPS drops, which were still present, but that's because of the poor macOS optimization of Fortnite. But yeah, interesting enough, if you go on Apple's website, they actually promote this mostly connected directly to your MacBook Pro. And even in the instruction manual, there is no mention of connecting this to a monitor. And there's actually no mention that the eGPU needs to be daisy changed with a monitor, especially the LG Ultrafine 5K monitor for the best performance. No mention of this. So yeah, like I said, if you don't use a monitor, only apps that support it would be using it. Otherwise, if you do use a monitor, it would be forced by macOS to be used, which is, of course, the preferred way of using it. But yeah, overall, the best option in terms of eGPUs is still the Razer Core X because it's cheaper and also upgradable. Uh, and also considering the fact that you do need to add an external monitor to take full advantage of the eGPU, well, the price considerably increases to the point where you're better off, you know, buying an iMac because it gives you better performance at an even lower price point. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this, all those tests that I've done, uh, and the eGPU, the state of the eGPU in general on macOS. Um, definitely subscribe if you want to see more interesting in-depth videos like this one. Turn on notifications by tapping on that bell icon. And finally, feel free to give a like if you enjoyed it to let me know. Every feedback on this really matters because this one took a really long time to make, especially. So... Yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about all this. If you think an eGPU is worth it, if you would be getting one, uh, the link for the uh, Razer Core X, by the way, once again, is in the description. If you guys are interested in purchasing that, you're also supporting the channel. 
for doing that. So that's pretty cool, but this has been pretty much it for now. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next video. So tech, signing out. Cheers.